It was natural that men should pattern their ideas of flight on that of birds. And it was not until recent times that Otto Lilienthal, through a matter of luck, showed that this was wrong. What about here, Gustav? On top of the sand hill? Yes. If we lie in the grass and don't move, soon they'll be flying quite close. I wish I had a telescope. Do you think that maybe Mother might buy it? Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> Mother's done more than enough for us already. And I certainly wouldn't ask her for a penny to buy us a telescope. No, I, I suppose you're right. Not for bird watching anyway. Hey, did you see that? The stork that just landed? Yes. He seemed to put his legs out and then come round facing the wind with his wings spread out wide. Yes, I saw that. Otto? What? Do you think that men will ever learn to fly? Oh, I'm sure of it. Well, what do you think we spend all our time like this for? If we don't hit on the secret of how birds fly, someone else will. And it's only by watching birds that we'll ever learn their secret. Now, now shut up your chatter and watch the birds. Listen, Otto, I'm getting cold. Stiff and cold. What do you say we head for home? We've been here four hours. Mm. Oh, all right. I suppose it'll be supper time when we get back. Hey, look over there. Where? Oh, yes, I see. It looks like a stork flapping about on the ground. Maybe it's caught in a trap or something. Come on, let's go and see. Oh, I've seen enough of storks for today. Let's go home, for heaven's sake, before we get into trouble for being late. Not on your life. If we can capture that stork alive... If we can capture it alive, what? Well, it's just a little idea of mine. Oh, come on now. And if you're as cold as you make out, let's run. It was lucky for Otto Lilienthal that he captured his stork, for it put him on the track of his great discovery, despite what his mother had to say when the brothers arrived home with a struggling bird. Otto Gustav! What in the world have you brought home now? It's a stork, Mother. We found it with a broken wing out in the Carlsberg Moor. Oh, dear me. Well, where are you going to put it? Oh, really, Otto, what on earth do you want a stork for? Kill it and put the poor thing out of its misery. Oh, it's not badly hurt. I'm going to patch up its wing and then put it to work. Put it to work? Oh, how can you be so absurd, Otto? I don't know what your father would say if he were alive. Now, Mother, you just wait and see. With this stalk well again, and tied to the ground with a long piece of cord, I'll really be able to study how she flies. See? Oh, you two and your flying. It's against the laws of God and man. Now get inside and clean up for supper. It's going cold. Fancy, a stalk in the house at night. Otto soon repaired the stalk's damaged wing, and while the holidays lasted... He and Gustav spent their time encouraging the bird to fly, then coaxing it down again with a string attached to its legs, and studying the action of its wings with scrupulous observation. Then they decided to go one step further. Now look, Gustav, all these weeks we've been making a hop about in the yard. Why don't we take her out on the moor and watch her in the wind? Oh, what for? We've seen everything she can do. Our next step is to build some wings, strap them on and imitate her. Not till I've seen what she does to get going in the wind. No, it's obvious, isn't it? They face away from the wind to take the air, flap like mad until they gain height, then face about into the wind to pull up and land. Yes, but... Oh, come on, Gustav. Out onto the moor where we can see for ourselves. <laughs> Here we are. This ought to do. Oh, certainly windy enough. Mm, just what I want. Uh, now, wait a minute, Auntie Stork, while I hammer your peg in. There. Now, up you go. Go on, fly. Well, fly, can't you? <laughs> what this bird needs is some German army discipline. She's never been as stubborn as this before. Well, shush! Fly! Well, I've got you facing away from the wind. What more do you want? If she wants to be difficult, let her try flying into the wind. All right, I will. There, now, how do you like that? Well, well what on earth do you make of that? She, she went straight up without hardly a flap. And straight into the wind. But she, 
She didn't seem to fly forward at all. Just straight up in the air. Gustav, this gives me a great idea, a great idea. I'm going home to work it out this minute. If I'm right... I do wish you'd get your elbows off the table and eat your supper. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm thinking. Surely not about that silly stalk again. Yes. Today, Gustav and I saw something we must have seen a hundred times before without taking any notice, didn't we? The stalk always faces the wind to take the air, Mother. That's the stalk's business. If you were a stalk, you'd probably do exactly the same. Now eat your schnitzel. Do you know what I think? I think that the flapping of a bird's wing is not the true explanation of its flight. In essence, a bird glides and only flaps its wings to make the air flow faster over its wing surface. The secret of flying is in gliders. Yes, I'm sure of it. Gliders. For the next 20 or more years, Otto Lilienthal experimented with first one form of glider and then another. But he could not devote all his time to flying. There was a living to be earned. And it was not until 1891 that he was in a position to take up his researches in earnest. By this time, he had written a remarkable book on the action of birds in flight. But he did not make the same mistake that so many men had made before him. Where they had tried to fly by the flapping of wings, and in many cases, with superb disregard for the laws of gravity, jumped to their deaths, Lilienthal pinned his faith in gliding never forgetting what he had learned from the stalk on Carlsberg Moor. His brother Gustav was no longer interested in learning the secret of flight, so Otto enlisted the aid of a friend named Ulitz. Between them, they acquired a hilltop near the town of Reinov and built on it a workshop and storeroom. It was in the summer of 1891 that Lady Luck smiled on Otto, soon after he'd made his largest glider of all. Well, Ulitz, my friend, there it is. Soon we shall know who is wrong, you or I. Well, I can't help thinking, Otto. This time you've bitten off more than you can chew. You mean because my glider has two wings? Is that it? Well, yes. You've never seen a bird with an upper and lower wing now, have you? No, 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 but that's quite beside the point. How many times must I impress on you only the theory of bird flight is of any use to us? The practice is quite, quite useless. That is why I refuse to entertain the idea of flapping wings and stick to my straight wing gliders instead. <laughs> if you don't mind my saying so, they aren't up to much now, are they? Uh, no. No, they're not. There is something lacking. But what it is, uh, I simply don't know. But you'll admit I, I have made some glides now, haven't I? Oh, a few score metres, yes. But, but you've never yet contrived to rise, uh, only to glide downhill. I never seem to get enough lift from my wing areas. And that's why I've doubled it by building the biplane. Oh, well, <clears throat> out we go and see how I fare. This time I really should fly. But like all the rest, his new glider was practically useless, even though he had made the new departure of building it with double wings. To understand exactly what next took place, one must picture Lillian Tall's contrivance. It was simply two wings made of willow saplings and tied together with cord. The wing surfaces themselves were a fabric, and it was Lilienthal's practice to run into the wind with the wings held above his head. But after his abortive efforts to glide with his new biplane, he was prepared to give up in disgust, and one night left the glider outside instead of storing it in the hilltop shed. That same night, it rained, and the next morning, at the shed on the hilltop, Lady Luck smiled. Ulitz, my friend, this is the last straw. I'm finished with these fantastic efforts to fly for good and all. What? After 26 years? I don't believe it. Well, I'm not going to build another glider, I can tell you that. Look at the confounded thing. Rain has wet the cords, they've all shrunk. My beautiful flat wing service has a curve in it. Mm, pity. Such a beauty, too. Well, it's ruined, sir, that's that. Oh, I may as well get it inside before it blows away. Uh, just a moment. The way you're holding the glider now, Otto, it has a curve just like the curve of a bird's wing at the shoulder. Hmm? Oh, so it has. <laughs> Funny I didn't notice, eh? Uh, just for the sake of interest, 
I wonder if I could glide with the wings curved like this. Why not try? I'm going to. <laughs> Help me up onto the roof, will you? Right. <clears throat> up you go. <sighs> Here we go. One, two, three, off. I'm flying. I'm flying. See you it. I can fly. I can fly. Bless my soul, he's actually rising. The man's in flight. He's flying. By an incredible stroke of fortune, Otto Lilienthal had discovered the aerofoil, the wing shape that makes it possible for every aeroplane to fly. The rain had shrunk the cords that held his glider's framework together, warping the upper surface into a rough curve. It was by no means a perfect wing section, but it enabled Lilienthal to make more than 2,000 flights, some as high as 400 feet and of many minutes' duration. Then, in 1896, his luck deserted him, and he crashed to fracture his spine and die. The science of flight has made many mighty strides since Otto Lilienthal's day, but it was he who showed how a wing could be made to lift and not cut uselessly through the air. But his discovery of the aerofoil, his pioneering of modern flight, was not a matter of intent. It was purely a matter of luck. This story was an excerpt from the original broadcast series titled A Matter of Luck, and it was made available to us through the courtesy of Radio Echoes. I sure hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, God bless.